feeling retro. Hey retro lovers, I hope you're feeling retro today because we're about to take a look at a slightly more modern take on some 90s technology. The Sony SLV-S3730 VCR video cassette player and recorder. If you're a regular here at Feeling Retro, welcome back. Remember to like this video. If this is your first time joining us, please subscribe and check out our other retro videos. So for those of you too young to remember, let's have a little history lesson. A VCR records analogue audio and analogue video from broadcast television or other source on the removable magnetic tape video cassette and can play back the recording. VCRs can also play back pre-recorded tapes. In the 1980s and 1990s, pre-recorded videotapes were widely available for purchase and rental. And blank tapes were also sold so the user and the buyer could make their own video recordings. The telecan, or television in a can, was produced by the UK Nottingham Electronic Valve Company way back in 1963 and with the first home video recorder. It was developed by Michael Turner and Norman Rutherford. It could be purchased... Purchased? It could be purchased as a unit or in a kit for, for £60. Now that seems cheap, but if we take into inflation, that's the equivalent of approximately £1,100 in today's money. A decade later, in the 1970s, there were two major standards. These were Sony's Betamax, also known as Beta Card, or just Beta, and JVC's VHS video home system, which competed for sales in what became known as the Format War. You've just seen some classic VHS titles there. Let us know which movie you enjoyed watching the most on VHS. I'm not going to tell you which one was my favourite, but I'll give you a clue. If you're my age or older, then a VCR was probably a common sight in yours and your friends' living rooms. But from about 2000, the DVD became the uni first universally successful optical medium for playback of pre-recorded videos, as it gradually overtook VHS to become the most popular consumer format. DVD recorders and other digital video recorders dropped rapidly in price, making the VCR obsolete. DVD rentals in the United States first exceeded those of VHS in 2003. Let's take a closer look at the Sony video cassette recorder, the SLV SE730. As with many Sony products, this was a higher end unit, although some critics do argue that this and other Sony products were and still are overpriced. But when I feel and use this system, I get exactly what I'd expect from a Sony unit. Nice, solid, well-built VCR with a quality feel. Has all the usual features, though competition boasts six heads for supposedly better quality recordings. This unit offers four head playback. In the early days of the VCR, consumers did complain at the noisy playback that the systems created whilst playing. This system is whisper quiet. Let's give it the noise test. The SE730 uses smart TriLogic and smart engine technology. It provided flash rewind, which would rapidly rewind up to a 180 minute tape. It offered Video Plus technology, which was the central concept for the system. And it was, of course, as you would expect in 2003, extremely simple. All you needed was a unique number, a plus code assigned to each program that you wanted to record. That was published in the television listings in the newspaper and magazines, such as the TV guide. So you'd have to get up, walk to the shops, purchase a newspaper, bring it back, circle and find the unique number that you wanted. To record a program, you'd then need to take the number from the newspaper and then to put it into the video recorder, which would then record on the correct channel at the correct time. The number was generated by an algorithm from the date and time and channel of the program. Who needs Netflix when you've got the Sony SE730? On the front panel of the system, we have the power and standby switch. We have the remote sensor down here, which is the exact location where you would need to point the remote. We have the tape compartment, which opens and closes manually. Next to that, we have the eject button. We have the play, the stop, the fast forward, the fast rewind, the pause, and the record buttons. In the display window, we have the video icon in the top left-hand side. 
the video icon next to that, telling us that there is a tape in the system. Right in the center of the display, we have the time counter. In the right hand side, in the red text, you'll see that it either says stereo, which it does now, that could change over to TV if we were watching TV or recording TV. Underneath the SP is a tape speed indicator and next to that we could see a clock symbol as well, which would show a timer or a recording indicator. The remote controller for this unit had mixed reviews. Some people said that it was rather difficult to use. I actually haven't found it too bad. I found it rather simple and straightforward to use. The remote control does offer a few extra things that the system doesn't itself. For example, slow play input select, and it allows you to clear all of the information, for example, timings and programmings that you've entered into the system there. Matches the system well, feels like a high quality, robust product. Let's take a look at the back panel. On the back panel, you can see there's really not a lot. These VCR systems were fairly simple. There's antenna inputs, TV inputs, two SCART ports, some audio ports, and of course, the serial number and batch information there. Leave us a comment in the comments section if you remember lugging around a monster of a TV unit like this. Thanks for joining us on another episode of Feeling Retro. If you weren't already, I hope after our trip down memory lane that you're feeling retro now. Did you like that little side sweep there?